Ahoy there, my children of the Force. Welcome to Star Wars Transmissions Q&A. And I'm your boy, Dan, and we've got some great questions to dive into. So let's get right to it. So our first question is from Princess Leia Organa, 7530, who asks, I just watched the new trailer for Ahsoka, and we hear Sabine call Ahsoka Master. And it sounds like she previously trained Sabine. Does this mean Sabine is force sensitive and Ahsoka was training her to become a Jedi? So guys, holy crap, the newest trailer for Ahsoka dropped the other day and wow, I am even more excited for that series now than I was before. I was already super excited for that series. Now that the trailer's dropped, holy crap. But yeah, the trailer kind of makes it sound like Ahsoka trained Sabine, at least at one point, maybe didn't go so well, and now we're going to see those two training in the upcoming series. If Ahsoka trained Sabine, it would make sense that the training would be focused on the Force and training to become a Jedi. Why would Sabine call Ahsoka Master otherwise, right? Sabine was trained by Kanan back in season three of Rebels, and she was trained in how to wield the Darksaber, and Kanan was basically doing some lightsaber form combat training. Uh, and during that period of time, Sabine does not refer to Kanan as Master. So let's say Ahsoka trained Sabine just to become a better warrior, right? Not, not necessarily a Jedi, just a better warrior. I don't think Sabine would be calling Ahsoka master in that, in that scenario. So unless Sabine was sarcastically calling Ahsoka master, I think that the implication is that Sabine is force sensitive and Ahsoka was training her to become a Jedi. On top of that, we, get, we got this shot that looks very much like Sabine trying to use the force during a fight with the dark Jedi Shin. So yeah, I think that there's a chance we may find out that Sabine is force sensitive. I have to admit, guys, if you would have asked me if I thought that we were going to see Ahsoka training Sabine in the Ahsoka series, I would have said not a chance in hell. But now that I know that that could possibly be the case, bro, sign me up. I am all for it. Myself and a lot of the fan base love Sabine Wren. So it'd be dope if she was force sensitive, which honestly makes a lot of sense to me. She's a badass warrior that was able to wield the dark saber effectively, and she was able to do it much better and much more quickly than fellow Mandalorian Din could. So yeah, I think that maybe at least in part that's because she's force sensitive. I've seen on Twitter multiple people pulling out examples of how Sabine could have pot potentially been force sensitive. Uh, Danny Girl and I were just watching Rebels tonight and we saw Sabine doing some high flying maneuvers and we were both like, bro, those are kind of maneuvers of someone who might be force sensitive. So, yeah, I think that this is a strong possibility and one that I am all for. And I'm very excited about uh, the potential of Sabine Wren being force sensitive. So that's a good segue into our next question, which comes from Kevin Keenan, 6785, who asks, for the new Ahsoka show coming out, will there be a flashback of Kanan? Before I answer this question, guys, I just want to again say that I am so damn pumped that Ahsoka is what, like a month and a half away from dropping. I cannot wait. I love Rebels so much. I've recently started my Rebels rewatch. I cannot wait to get back into learning about the Ghost crew and what they've been up to since the finale of Rebels. I'm so damn excited. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get into Kevin's question. So my first inclination is that, no, we're not going to see a, a flashback of Kanan. But, bro, I also had no idea that we could potentially see Ahsoka training Sabine in this series. So anything's on the table at this point. I think at some point in Ahsoka, we're going to hear Kanan's name thrown around and people that haven't watched Rebels, they're, need to, they're going to need to get some sort of info about who Kanan was, why he's so important to the characters in Ahsoka. 
right? And a flashback that shows Kanan could help out with that for those uh, audience members who are not familiar with Kanan. But you could also make the argument that a quick conversation between two characters can also serve the same purpose, right? Uh, but as someone who's a huge Kanan fan, and again, as a huge Rebels fan, I would love a flashback scene that features Kanan, especially if it's a scene of Kanan training Ezra, or even a scene that explains how Kanan and Hera were both in love with each other. That would be incredible and would be something I would be very excited to see in Ahsoka. Now, quick spoiler warning. So if you don't want any potential spoilers for Ahsoka, dip at now, get those booty cheeks out of here. This is a very minor spoiler warning, but still, if you don't want anything spoiled, dip out. Uh, there was recently images from a new Lego set for the Ahsoka series that I don't know if it was released or if it was leaked, uh, but the image shows Jason Syndulla being included in that Lego set. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with Jason Syndulla, he's the son of Kanan Jarrus and Hera Syndulla. I mention this because if Jason is going to be in Ahsoka, that's another reason why it might be important uh, to explain who Kanan is for those that are unfamiliar with Rebels. And a flashback scene could really help with that. Now, guys, I have to admit, I want a I wanna freaking flashback scene. I, I think that would be so dope. So thank you so much, Kevin, for planting that seed in my head because, yeah, a flashback of Kanan would be a ton of fun and would be something I would be really excited to see. All right, moving and grooving to our next question. Worms McCuddy 4953 asks, which movie are you more excited for? Dawn of the Jedi, Ray's movie, or Dave Filoni's movie? This is a good question. Uh, so just a quick recap. The new, uh, so Ray's new Jedi Order film is going to take place some number of years. We don't know exactly how many uh, after the events of The Rise of Skywalker. And Dave Filoni's film is going to be the finale of all the shows that are taking place during the New Republic time period. So Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Skeleton Crew. So Filoni's film is going to be the end point of all those of all those shows and stories. And so while I'm excited about the potential of all of those films, let's make this a little bit larger. The, the one that I'm most excited for is is James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi. So Dawn of the Jedi is supposedly going to be exploring the birth of the Jedi and the discovery of the Force, and it's going to take place thousands of years prior to the events of the Skywalker saga, which I want Lucasfilm to get far away from the Skywalker saga, so that is right up my alley. Uh, Mangold has stated he was inspired by biblical epics and where the Force comes from. So the potential for me, at least in my opinion, the potential for this film is massive. And I could totally see the story playing out over multiple films just because of how this story could go. It could take so many different directions. And I feel like, hey, you could very easily tell this story over multiple films, which I think is dope. Uh, with the dawn of the Jedi Order, right? Because if we're learning about the, the birth of the Force, the dawn of the Jedi, we could potentially explore things like the Hundred Year Darkness, which was a period uh, basically when the, the Sith for, uh, formed. A rogue Jedi split off from the Jedi Order and formed essentially what would become the Sith Order and a war broke out between the two. We could also see uh, uh, or learn about the Dai Bendai, which in canon were the religious uh, precursors, the religious group that would become the precursors to the Jedi, at least in the current canon. In Legends, uh, the Jedi were the precursors to the Jedi. And again, there's just so much potential for this type of story and where it could go. And because of that, this is the film that, for me, I'm most excited about. Uh, the big thing for me is that, again, Mangold's film is going to be taking place in a completely different era from the Skywalker saga, which I think Lucasfilm desperately needs to do. I know Ray's film is not going to be a part of the Skywalker saga, but still, uh, the fact that Dawn of the Jedi is going to be taking place thousands of years before the events of the Skywalker saga is just so awesome and so appealing to me that that's the film of those three 
that I'm most excited for. All right. So for our next question, El Pepe 3923 asks, why didn't Maul get converted into an Inquisitor? There's a couple reasons why I think Maul was not converted into an Inquisitor. Right, so during the Clone Wars, Maul was actively working to undermine and rival Sidious. He and his brother, Savage Opress, they were rival Sith Lords during Season 5 of the Clone Wars. During the Mandalore arc, uh, uh, Maul and Savage were, a rival, were rival Sith Lords to Darth Sidious. And then later on in the Clone Wars, Maul planned to lure Anakin to Mandalore so in season seven, right, Maul orchestrates the siege of Mandalore to hopefully lure Obi-Wan and Anakin to Mandalore so that he could hopefully kill Anakin and rob Sidious of his prized pupil, right? He also wanted Ahsoka to become his apprentice. Remember in, in that ball and ass duel right before that duel between Ahsoka and Maul, he was going to take Ahsoka as his, his apprentice so that those two could destroy Darth Sidious and that hopefully he could take the place as a Sith master. So knowing Maul's history of trying to undermine and rival him, Sidious would be foolish to allow Maul to become an Inquisitor, right? So there's just no way Sidious would have wanted Maul in that kind of role, right? Sidious is, is too smart to allow that. And in addition to that, Sidious would have never have allowed the Inquisitors to become strong enough to potentially rival him. And while Maul, he never got to a point where he could seriously rival Sidious in terms of his, his power in the Force or his, his strength in the Force, who's to say that his strength in the Force wouldn't have grown if he was a, an Inquisitor, right? Another thing to consider is that I don't think Maul would have ever accepted being subservient to both Darth Sidious and Darth Vader. I don't think that would be in his cards whatsoever as an as an Inquisitor. Excuse me, as an Inquisitor. And after what happened to him on on Naboo, Maul's main focus and his purpose was to try his best to put roadblocks up for, for Darth Sidious as well as get revenge on Obi Wan Kenobi. So while we don't know a ton about Maul's time between the end of the Clone Wars and then up until when he reemerges in in Rebels, it wouldn't shock me in the slightest if Maul used Crimson Dawn to obtain power, to obtain wealth, so that he could try to position himself against Sidious while also trying to find Obi Wan. Because we know he in Rebels he's trying to find Obi Wan again. So those are my reasons why I think Maul wouldn't have worked out as as an as an Inquisitor. Excuse me, as an Inquisitor. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Do you think Maul could have potentially been an Inquisitor? Do you think Sidious would have wanted him as an Inquisitor? Or do you think Maul would have been willing to be an Inquisitor uh, and work under Darth Vader uh, in the Inquisitorius? So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Now, our next question is a spoiler for Jedi Survivor. So if you don't want any spoilers for that game, get those booty cheeks up on out of here. Alec Jackman 2655 asks, what are your thoughts on Seer's fight with Vader? So in Jedi Survivor, let me make this a little larger. In Jedi Survivor, we learned that Seer Junda had established a new Jedi archive on the planet Jedi and was a part of the Hidden Path, which was an underground network that worked to shelter Jedi and force sensitives from the Empire. And we learned about the Hidden Path in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, right? Uh, a little after the midway point in that game in Jedi Survivor, Seer, Cal Kestis, and company were betrayed, and the Empire learned what Seer was doing on Jedi, prompting old buddy Darth Vader to personally come and handle Seer, resulting in their duel, which was incredible, so incredible. Ultimately, Vader killed Seer. Although Seer, although Seer definitely gave him a run for his money, that is for sure. Now, to answer Alex's question, I like the duel a lot. I love that part of the game. It is incredible. And then when you get to Seer and Vader's duel, it had me on the edge of my seat, guys, even though I knew that, hey, Vader, there's no way Vader can die here because 
we know he's got to live, right? But I didn't know if Seer would live. And sure enough, Vader kills her, which was absolutely gut-wrenching and heartbreaking to witness. I, you can go and watch my streams that I, uh, my stream, I should say, of when I was playing that section of the game. I actually released a video where, uh, uh, for my reaction to that part of the game. And guys, spoiler alert, I like just broke down and, and started crying at that part in the game. It is so incredible. It is gut wrenching and it is just absolutely heartbreaking. It like crushed me watching it. Uh, and, the moment when Cal finds Seer just like decimated me. It crushed me. And I was, I was like trying as I was playing that game to like fight back the tears because I'm streaming and I was just like, I can't, I can't hold it back. Like it is just so emotionally wrought that scene. It's incredible. I, I have seen people complaining about Seer putting up a fight against Darth Vader which I think is just straight up buns, man. That's straight up booty cheeks. I think people get way too hung up over how strong someone is or, or how, so, how, how good of a fighter is or how good of a duelist they are. Uh, those are things I get it. They're cool. They're fun to talk about. But I think when it gets in the way of whether or not you enjoy a story or storytelling, I would say, bro, you need to pump the brakes a little bit on there. As someone who is a fight fan and someone who is trained in jujitsu and Muay Thai for years, I can tell you straight up that there can be nights where, hey, you might not be on, on your game and someone of a lower, lower rank is giving you a run for your money. It happens. It happens to the best of us. All right. So that's a reason why people love combat sports and sports in general. Anything can happen on any given day in terms of sports or, or, or fights. And so I, I think if you keep that in mind, right, Vader could have just been having an off day or this, this series, or excuse me, this, this game took place roughly around the same time as the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Vader could be in, in a weakened state. Uh, but to me, like that thought never crossed my mind that, Oh, I, I, I'm going to, be detracted from what I'm watching because of Vader supposed to be like opt to me. What I enjoyed in the moment was that good storytelling. Seer is putting up a fight against Vader. Vader ultimately defeats her and kills her. And it is absolutely crushing. What's so ridiculous to me, I have to say is people complaining about Seer and, and, and Vader's fight is that Vader killed Seer. So it's not like Seer killed Vader. She gave him a run for his money. She, I think at one point, I'm trying to remember, I think she might like have gotten his shoulder with her lightsaber. And then she uses the force to pull down uh, the archive on Vader, which I don't think that would really hurt him that much. The dude has had so many things, so much more heavy things dropped on him that I doubt that that really made a significant impact on, on him. So to me, I don't understand people's complaints with that fight. Seer didn't win. Vader killed her. I, I, I think it was an excellent, excellent duel and an excellent moment in, in the game and in that story. That's a good segue into our last question. Just as I'm like, hey, you know, people get too hung up on how strong people are in the force or their dueling capabilities. So this next question comes from Sean Foucher, 9602, who asks, who is the better duelist, Luke Skywalker or Count Dooku? When I saw this question, it was a little tough for me to answer, at least initially, because we've got limited info on Luke's dueling abilities after Return of the Jedi. We don't have a ton of stories right now in canon about Luke's time post Return of the Jedi. Right. And Return of the Jedi, he becomes a Jedi Knight. And then we see him years later living in exile. We get some glimpses of him uh, post Return of the Jedi in both The Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. We get some information about uh, uh, Luke in Shadow of the Sith and in some of the Charles Soule comics, but we don't get a ton of information. 
So with that, it was kind of, I don't want to say it was difficult for me, but it, it made me think for at least a little bit. With that said, guys, I think we got to go with our boy Luke, right? Let me make this larger. We got to go with Luke, right? He's Anakin's son. He's supposed to be super strong and powerful in the Force, which made tapping into the Force more easy for him. There is a Charles Soule comic that I really like. It's Rise of Kylo Ren. And in that comic, Luke is explaining to one of his students in his Jedi Academy that basically for someone that maybe, let's say, has a higher midichlorian count than someone else, it's like a door. That person has the door open more to be able to access the Force more easily than if, let's say, I had a lower midichlorian count. The door is going to be closed more for me, and it's going to be harder for me to tap into the Force and to access the Force. So for Luke, that door is open very, very wide. And again, he's supposed to be uh, uh, extremely powerful because of the fact that he's Anakin's son. And what we've gotten of Luke in terms of his lightsa- his lightsaber skills and his dueling capabilities, I, uh, even though it's brief, it's pretty badass, right? I mean, him in season two of The Mandalorian is he looks dope as hell and looks extremely deadly. I know there he's fighting droids, but man, he looks like a serious threat. Um, and then even in the book of Boba Fett, where we see him practicing with, with Grogu, you could tell our boy knows what he's doing, right? I know that Dooku is one of the best duelists of all time, but if, I'm going to go back to jujitsu, right? If we use jujitsu as a comparison, let's say you've got two, two jujitsu practitioners that are equally as good, at least on paper, but one of them is stronger and faster. Again, on paper, the person that's stronger and, and is faster is probably going to win, right? Going back to what I said before, anything could happen, right? So in a duel between Dooku and Luke, Dooku could, I could totally see a scenario where Dooku could murk Luke. But I think overall, Luke in his prime, I think is just going to wind up being stronger than Count Dooku in his prime. He's going to have a stronger connection to the Force. He, and because of that, he'd have an edge over Dooku. And that's why I'm picking our boy, Luke frickin' Skywalker. But that is all the time we've got for questions this week, my friends. Let me know down in the comments, who do you think? Who would you pick in a duel between Count Dooku and Luke Skywalker? Would it be Luke or would it be Dooku? Let me know down in the comments. Let me know also down in the comments. Did you agree with any of my wild ass uh, answers to these questions? Did you disagree with any of them? Let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Now is a good time. You freaking knuckleheads like this video, subscribe to Star Wars Transmissions, help the channel out. I always appreciate the love and support that I get from you guys. It is immensely appreciated. If you have TikTok and Twitter. Follow Star Wars Transmissions on there at SW Transmissions. I recently got back into posting on Twitter, so give us a follow on there again at SW Transmissions. With that said, my friends, thanks for watching. May the Force be with you and stay nerdy.